Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. I'm here with uh, Richie Myers. He Hola. is uh, a photographer friend, longtime friend, and a on-site flash lighting expert. Something like that, right? You, sure. You travel with a big bag with a lot of lights because you do a lot of off-camera flash, um, location lighting, and you do it out of this bag. Yeah. What is it? It's uh, Airport Security 2.0? That's exactly what you it is. You got a Pelican with a bunch of stuff. You've got your uh, Tamarack with a bunch of stuff. So what I thought would be fun is if Richie came out and helped educate me on off-camera flash because it's something that, that I'm not as knowledgeable, sorry for touching you, as Richie. It's all right, bud. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm not as knowledgeable as Richie at this, and I think it's going to help a lot of people out there, as well as help me in my photography to learn how to properly set off-camera flash or multiple flashes and, and learn all of these different knickknacks that Richie has and built, which, which come in handy because we use this attachment thing. What did we attach to the, to the stand? It's one of their little clips. They make a 175. So it's a it's, it's bogan? Like, it's a bogan piece, yeah. It's yeah, a Manfrotto it, piece. It's really one simple. Really simple for connecting a, uh, yeah, this thing is cool. But it's a little, it's the little it's one. It's a smaller one, so I need to get one of those. So what, what are you going to focus in on for off-camera flash? What are you going to try to show people with your SB? What are you going to use, a 900? Um, typically, I would use a 900, either on-camera to just as a trigger. Um, today, what we'll do is uh, most people aren't going to have, if they have one speed light, you know, they're not going to have something to trigger. Sure. So they're going to have to use their pop-up flash. So we're going to show them how to use it outside in this kind of light, which we're in nice light right here. Yeah. Where we're gonna be shooting over here is absolutely dreadful light. Yeah, we'll um, see what we come up with. But, but you... what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna, we're not gonna try to overpower the sun today. We're not gonna get that technical or anything like that. We're gonna try to make nice light with one speed light and the on-camera flash as simply just a trigger. It's not gonna do anything but trigger the flash. Okay. No fill, no nothing. That sounds good. And, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through a whole photo shoot. I'm gonna be the subject. Richie's gonna be shooting it. He's gonna to talk to you while he is setting things up to give you some feedback, uh, to give you some information on what he's actually doing. But in the, uh, we'll probably make some more technical videos where he's gonna talk about how to set the camera, how, right? What are you gonna yeah. talk about? Cause well, well, we'll go through, I mean, cause each camera's gonna be individually separate, but we have a 7,000 here, we have a 700 here. So that pretty much covers anything with a pop-up flash that has the CLS system sure. built in. And we'll show them how they can get started with it, not get into the groups and the, you know, all the craziness that with, you know, some of the jobs, I mean, right there's six speed lights yeah. and Q flashes that are capable of being CLS. And at any given time, I could have three separate groups set up each with different mathematics coming out of it. And that's, you know, let's, we'll start the snowball effect. So we're going to stick with the very basics now. And then maybe yeah. in the future, uh, we will go into full on, let's do three, whole groups and see how that works. Uh, but gets, I know- It gets sketchy. It's yeah. Like, it's like Photoshop when you have 15 layers and you go, which layer am I on? I know, I've seen you do multiple, <laughs> I've seen you put six flashes up on things and hair lights and everything like that. So we're gonna get into it, hopefully give you some more information that you guys can <laughs> you know, learn from. I hope to learn from this stuff as well, which I know I'm going to because I need to start to uh, get better at this. And so Richie's gonna help us out now. We're gonna get right to the shoot and Richie's gonna be talking to you. We'll be right back. All right, we're about to turn over control to Richie here, who's going to run this photo shoot and tell you what he's doing while he's doing it. And um, yeah, you're up. So we're going to do right. the whole setup. Basically, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of choose. We have our background. We have um, the available light of what we have here that we're going to be working with. Looking at our background over here, it's just going to go poof. We shoot probably F4, long lens, compress the, the the poo out of it right and just make it look nice and lovely so how's know? the background going to look compared to say me as the subject you'll be sharp you'll be you know front to back sharp your hair we'll make sure we get the whole you know whole shebang um in terms of brightness in the background it's going to be bright i mean I, i'm going to try to pull it down probably i mean we're not going to mess with putting two or three speed lights as one light source not this time not this time i mean typically that's what i would do i'd probably put um, probably two speed lights into a softbox or through an umbrella. Um, and what that would do is, you know, if I'm shooting one speed light at full power, two at half power, it cuts down my recycling time and it gives me, I shoot quick. Okay. I, I'm a machine gunner because I mean, <laughs> I like candid moments. I like, I like the person feeling comfortable and I don't like feel like a, a lot of the stuff I do. 
I don't want to waste people's time. Sure. And certain people, you put, you know, this gigantic lens in front of them, they go. <gasps> sure. So, you know, as soon as you get them warmed up, you just, I just want to roll. Yeah, remember that. And old... I want to be out of there too. I want to be golfing or sure. home working. Remember what they used to say in school? Blow the first roll because the, there's nothing ever good in that first 36. And and that I, I don't believe. I mean, a lot of the stuff. I mean, I, I shot a guy, um, the head of uh, HR for Homeland Security, and the first eight frames were that the ones it. that rolled. And that's, I shot probably 120 frames of the guy, but the first eight frames is when we first introduced ourselves and we first had a conversation. We first silenced our cell phones, and <laughs> and uh, it, it's just that's how it works for me. Yeah, I mean, but that's because there's, that's where the banter's still at. It's not the, the nervousness didn't really fully set in because you didn't give them the chance to. Sure, and and what I like to see once you get the shot, there's no reason to keep overdoing it, and that's something that a lot of people run into issues with they'll they'll get the shot and then redo the same thing almost right. 15 they'll, they'll 16 they'll times try to re, you know recreate the magic like, that already happened you got it move on it's okay what, if it's two I'll, minutes what i'll typically do is if if like say we're we're here right now to do basically we're doing a three-quarter portrait maybe it might go a little tighter it might go you know in the headshot so three-quarter uh, above the knee and up uh, not not full length we have a horrible no offense to the the, the, the groundskeeper at the fro compound but yeah. It's summer. It's 105 degrees out today. That's, that's why we're in the shade. Um, and, you know, lawns don't grow. They're not, it's not going to look pretty. Yeah. Plus, the way we're going to be using the light is we almost want to fool the frame into thinking that we are out in that sunlight. That sure. I'm not putting you in the shade to, to recreate that light, to model it. I want to model the light. I don't want unflattering light. I want to make the light, you know, traditional 45-degree angle coming in, but untraditional at the same All right, time well, the way we're going to do it. Let's do it. So we'll start with how I would normally do things. I already have an idea in my head what I want to do. So it's going to be, you know, a, a long lens, 7200, probably racked all the way up to 200. Version one. Version one. If you want the 300, I'll go get the 300. I don't, I don't like shooting with something that big. Yeah. It's not, I love the look of it. I don't like the portability of it. I like being able to move around and not be restricted by tripods, monopods. It's true. Would you get a 200 F2? I would, I just, I, I, again, I don't like being restricted to not having the capability. I, I stopped at Allen's, he was there at uh, midnight the other night. The figures. And uh, I was like, <laughs> knocking on the window, I'm like, can I borrow the 200 F2? And he said no. He's like, Dad, don't bother me right now. <laughs> so basically what we're going to do, we're going we're gonna to start 200 ISO. Because just looking at that light, I mean, that background is just going to be crazy. So... So I'm going to be like, we're here. going to look where, where we want you. We kind of predetermined a spot. Yeah, why we'll why this spot? It. What are you looking for in this spot? I see a nice little rim on you. I'm going to have you come up half a step just because I don't like to. I, I want you completely in shadow, but I want some of the, the nice bright light separating you. Fix sure. your, uh, your right sleeves flipped up there. So you're picking up all the little detail-y stuff. I, I mean, that's, you know, that's our job, you know. In a shot like this, the bug on your neck drives me nuts, but that's a retouch. Bug on the neck? <laughs> He's attracted to the fro. So what we're yeah. going to do is we're, we're going to, you know, I always try to start with finding my frame and guesstimating my exposure. So before you set up any lights? Yeah, before anything, because I, if, you know, certain stuff, I'll have a complete preconceived notion of, all right, this is how I'm lighting it. This is how I'm doing it. That's where I'm going to go with it. With something like this, we're starting from start to scratch, or, or scratch to finish, and I don't want to have a light set up and not have them, under, you know, have your followers not understand what I'm doing. Um, traditionally, we would have you in full shade, and it'd be on camera flash, blasting you. That's how 99% of the people do it. You know, there's no modeling of the light. We're and gonna you don't model like that. the light. No, I hate it. It's flat. It's ugly. It's not. We're paid because we do things the way we do them not by the book not by the book i mean you know we all learn we, we we all learn the same rules you know we can go through them you know we can do a rembrandt who blah 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 sure uh, but if everybody follows zucker but it's not my not my forte and if everybody followed the same rules you we, would have the same pictures from 1992 right. all the time right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to find our frame i, I i'm starting at 400 f4 200 ISO, and I'm pretty much on the money for the background. So you background were guessing the setting? Yeah, I usually try to, to, to get a starting point. I, I find my aperture that I want my background to look at, and then I build the shutter around it. Now, 400, most speed lights, they're not going to sync fully. Nikon's got a little bit more of an advanced system, the, the auto FP. 
Um, we're going to play with it. It's Sometimes a high it works stick. great. Sometimes it doesn't. Outside, again, because we're in the shade, it'll work a lot better. If we were in full sunlight, that little sensor on the side of the flash, sun hits it, pop, 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 pop. So, so we're going to try to find a workable shutter speed. We, I, I want to be probably around 250, 320. You know, I want to cheat the shutter as much as possible. But With flash or without? With flash. It, basically, what we're doing is we're building our ambient, and then we're going to... We're gonna model light on you from there. Well, doesn't the 250th, isn't that where the, the max sync of the camera? That is the max sync, but I mean, you can shoot, if you're on camera and you're doing paparazzi stuff, you can shoot a thousand, two thousand. Like I've done where, you know, I'm on a wedding and I'm, I have 20 minutes to do full family and everything else. That flashes on the camera. I'm fighting a background like this and I need a, a, a deeper aperture. Yeah. I'm, I'm on camera and I'm shooting probably 2,000, 5, 6, 200 ISO. You know, for this kind of stuff, five six is way too much. I want that that pretty bokeh in the background. Sure. I, I might even go to three five because the compression is going to pull that depth of field for me. But by doing that, now I'm increasing my shutter speed. So, do the math here. We're going to go all the way down to a hundred, and we're going to go three twenty three five. Hundred what? Hundred ISO. Okay. And it's a nice, pretty background. Now, now the biggest thing is too is your white balance. We have two different light balances coming into play. We have a speed light that's going to be balanced to daylight, and then we have absolute daylight. I want you warmer than I want the background. I want it to be golden, but I don't want I want to kind of mute it at the same time. So I'll probably probably gel that with a quarter CTO. Okay, so you don't worry about it after the fact. You find it. You know, I'll, the I'll set file. my camera on a specific white balance um, with auto. It's going to shift. Sure. It's going to shift all over the place, right. and then. I might find one frame and say, okay, what's the temperature of this frame and then sequence them that way. Or I might take the first frame, find the white balance I like, apply it to everything, then go through and do my edit. Usually I retouch a single image. I find my favorite, I retouch it first, like as far as, you know, contrast and everything. And then I'll put it to everything and I'll go and I'll make final, you know, final adjustments. Sure. So we have our framing, beautiful jar right there. We're at 320, 3.5, ISO 100. He looks, typically sharp we're gonna try one more make sure our VR is off and we racked out we're about 180 on the on the beautiful so now that we have that we're gonna go into lighting you um, I'm gonna use a, I, I'm gonna use an 800 well I'm, I typically I would use a 900 because the battery packs and I just I trust 900s a lot of people have problems with them over overheating you had one blow up on you. I did. Um, I sent it back. Never had a problem since. Um, so yeah, well, you know, we're gonna roll with a 900. We're gonna use an SD9 battery pack. Um, so what the battery pack does is allows you to shoot quicker. It gives me eight high capacity rechargeables. The the problem with the 900 is uh, the only issue I've ever found with it is it can't take batteries that run hot in it. Hmm. And batteries with higher milliamps run hot. And loops are like I think 2100 milliamps. These are 2750. These run a lot better. Right. So for traditional door cells or whatever, I go to Lowe's and I buy a hundred pack of for ten bucks of whatever batteries because I use them once and I toss them. Or you know they go in the Xbox remotes and the TV remotes. Have you and, tried the uh, lithiums? They run hot. The lithiums run hot too. Yeah. And you'll get you know f if you're machine gun and you're shooting forty frames, all of a sudden you hear doo -doo -doo -doo, flash is dead. That's why there's extras, but I don't want to have to deal with that. Sure. So we'll start there. Um, Normally we'd use a lightweight stand, but it's windier today, so we're gonna use a heavier stand, and we're gonna brace that with, uh, with what you have, so you don't have to carry sandbags and everything out with you. Um, since it is gonna be a shot about here, I'm gonna use, I, th I think I'm just gonna use a shoot through umbrella with this. Okay. Something nice and basic, nice and clean, real nice soft light, distributes it evenly. Um, we might get a little more advanced, I was going to use a softbox, just a little LumaQuest, but we're doing a little bit wider. They're good for headshots and real tight stuff, but they're small. The spread's not that good on them. And I have a 16-inch pop-up, but I want to keep this nice and basic. So this is a, a Westcott, just a collapsible. Fits right in my bag. An did umbrella pick, adapter by Manfrotto. Did you pick that up at Allen's? Everything, just about 99% of the stuff I own, I purchased from... Alan's camera and 
I, I, I've tried, you know, I've been to the big, the big stores. We won't name names. Um, the personality's not there. The selection's there on certain things. The pricing's the same. Sure. But, I, you know, I'm a small guy as far as business. I'm a small business. I'd rather help another small business that, you know, helps me. Yeah. Alan's always been very, very good to me. And uh, so what we're going to do is this is another little gadget. That, you know, we'll go over later all the little stuff. But just a little Giotto's ball head with a uh, strobo frame locking shoe. The shoes that come with the flashes are great if you don't have this type of stuff. You can mount them. They have a quarter 20 screw on the bottom. The reason I use the locking shoe is it independently holds it away from just that little locking mechanism on the flash. And it's a lot more secure. So drop that in there. I was traveling lately, so these are all buttoned up. We'll do that. And we want to do that now. So you're going to use, uh, you're going to, it's going to shoot through that. Right. How's that for power? Does it? It's not going to eat up as much. Uh, soft box, you're going to lose a little more. This is basically just making it a little more diffused, the softer source. Um, and it's going to be in real nice and tight. So the light's going to be super soft to begin with. Uh, if I wanted harsh light, we would do probably reflective silver umbrella. But this way we have, you know, what we need. And the great thing about this is I don't have to worry about power. I don't have to worry about recycle. Because you're putting the battery pack on it? I'm putting the battery pack on it. And these are two of my favorite things, the 900 and the SD9s. They've made my life great. So we're gonna set this on remote. The nice thing about the 900, as opposed to the 800 was, the 800 you had to hold the middle button down. If you slipped or something, you missed a menu. Um, most of the time when you take them out of my bag, they're already in remote. We're just gonna start, we're, we're here by ourselves, nobody else is here. Group A, channel one. Um, zoom it all the way out because I want to spread as much on the umbrella as I can. So explain why you're zooming it out. Um, if I was doing something like a headshot and all I had was this, I'd probably shoot a little more in that range. Mm -hmm. I'd compress it a little more. And I'd, I'd probably have the flashlight closer to it because I want a smaller light source. Um, because we're covering, you know, basically from below your hands to a little above your head because some, you know, some people crop, you know, no rules, right? No rules. No rules. Um, it's just going to give me more of a spread. The diffuser is going to spread it out a little bit. It's going to soften it. We're losing probably between the diffuser and, the, and, the, and the, the umbrella. Probably a good stop. So we're going to come in and place it. Now, the one downside of CLS. Any chance we could do it on the other side so we don't block the camera? <sighs> <laughs> well, this is the issue with CLS when you're using the pop-up flash. Yeah. The receiver's got to see. So if I'm shooting vertical, my receiver's shooting this way. Okay. So we're going to try it. I'll let's move try the it. camera. No, we'll let's try it. Let's okay. try it before we even get there. Now, on the side of your flash, there's a little LED window. Nice thing about having these little ball heads is you can position the flash wherever you want. You got that little ball, that little window right there. That's what needs to see the other flash. Right. So we're going to do that. We're going to put this because that's. So you're angling, you're, you're going vertical with the flash, sort of. Right. I don't want to, I'm, I'm, I'm throwing light away if I'm putting it this way. Right, so you want it all using, positioned on the body because it's going up and right. down. And we'll, we'll probably feather it back on you. So go back and stand right, your heels on that stick. Now this is, an, this is, this is all pretty basic. You know, the closer the light is, one, the less power we lose, two, the softer the light. That's really, really going to be directional. So look, look at camera for me. Give me there. You're going to shift a little bit this way towards the light. There like you this. go. Yeah. yeah. Spread it out. Give me that cowboy. Giddy up. So we're actually going to turn you the other way. There you go. And take a half step forward. I want that sun off you. There it is. That's the problem with lunchtime sun. Toughest time to shoot, but we're going to try to pull it off, right? We're going to pull out. We're not going to try. We're not here to try things. We're here to make things happen. And that's, that's the thing about what we do is we don't get second chances with a lot of things. This is, you know, maybe someday we can do a, you know, 
come out on job with me where I have 10 minutes with the CEO or, or whoever. Sure. Now this is what's called J-hook. What this does is turn the super clamp and J-hook means that I can take my valuable camera bag filled with all my goodies and essentially turn it into a 25 pound sandbag. We have an umbrella on here. Yeah. Basically that is a big sail. It's gonna pick up the, the, the wind. Yeah. Now the good thing about the way it is, is the wind's going into it and it's angled down so it's washing the wind away, but I don't want to cross when they come in. So we super clamp, button this up. Wow. Now we got to wait. Now if anything happens, it goes this way. Everything's cool. Pretty cool. Take two steps back. So here's, here's something you deal with on jobs. In a perfect world, that would work great. Flash isn't seeing the little flick flash, even if we go reverse here and we try to direction it. This thing is such a, a just by the time it gets there, it's not, even, it's not even existent. So what we're gonna do is. So you have a solution because what's going on is that the, uh, the, the flash isn't being picked up by the receiver in, the fl in this flash to trigger it even though it's shooting right at it. Yeah, and, and I mean, these flashes aren't powerful, these, the, the little guys. Um, that little on-camera flash, uh, if we were inside, not a problem. But by the time it hits here, it's spread out. That little sensor up there, it's not picking it up. Right. Which so is, there's, it, there's two different ways we could do it. I could put the 2470 on it and move in. But that changes the whole background. Changes the background. Um, doesn't well, look as good. Let's try it. Well, you know what we'll do is we'll try 70 on the 7200. Because I really want to emphasize, you know, how to get it done. Sure. But it definitely changed. Like, I like shooting at the later, uh, higher end. Still didn't do it, did it? No. Is it on? Yeah. Did it go that time? No. Was it going there? there? There we go. What was the difference? Something hey, simple? Hey, we're in, oh, look at that. Was it something simple, Richie? Something simple. What'd you forget to do? I was on, I was on B. All no right, so that. No, I'm on B. <laughs> this is, hey, this is, this is how we're going here. So, so we're gonna look. So it was just a quick, see that's the thing when you do mess things up. Sometimes it's uber duber, something really simple that you're forgetting to do. And in this case, something basic, something simple. In this case, the camera was set to B and the flash was set to A. And as long as you figure it out, you keep going with it. And usually you just need to take a second, run through the process and, and find out what you did and you'll get it right. That and always make sure you hit OK. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see here. We're on TTL, 320.35. So what does TTL give you opposed to what other, other it, options? It, it sees what the camera's seeing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's taking into account and saying, all right, what do I need to put out? And it works good sometimes. Usually we're in manual. Um, I'm not crazy about this light on you right now. You see, turn, turn a little bit towards the light. There you go. Just cheat it a little bit. Got a nice rim on you. I'm going to make that red shirt pop. There it is. Look at that. And I'm not the easiest nah, that's model. That's nice. I don't do very much, do I? Uh, no, you're all right. I let the hair do it all. The hair, the hair is what you are. You are the hair. You are the fro. That's it? You're the hair. That's, that's all you see me as, right? 11 years, you're the hair. Huh? I remember before the hair. You remember shaved head. I remember shaved head. I remember a lot of things. <laughs> so, basically, we got our light down. Um, so, we're going to roll. All right. We're going to play around. I want you to kind of just, you know, what's that, God? Anything with the power? Like, did you have to do anything, or is that what TTL no, was doing? No, honestly... Normally, you know, I use uh, exposure compensation in the camera and typically, uh, you know, I'll drop it a half a, st a third stop or if it's not giving me what I need. But right there, that's what's crazy about how good this system is. This is why I never went to the dark side. Sure. The fact that I can just put that on TTL and find the exposure I want and, and just run with it. it. It's crazy. Yeah, I really need to see it to, to understand it more. 
fully. Just huh. to see that you set it and you just get it. I mean, that's that's first frame. We'll show them that. It's number 21. Sure. Oh, nice. I mean, it's, it's and not... You have, and you have samples of what it looks like without a flash, too. Yeah. I so mean, we'll put we, them... We went from here to there. Nice. Okay, and the background looks fine. We warmed it up a little bit sure. with the white bounce. Um, so that makes total sense. I mean, that's simple, and it's it definitely... I mean, is do you find that there is a place? Because like, you know how I shoot. Mm -hmm. I try to wrangle the light right. naturally. Right. I can start using reflectors and things like that to bounce light in. Right. Um, right, wrong? you think one is better than the other? Do you think... No, I just... I personally... I'd rather find what I want and build it. It's easier to build something than repair something. So you think when you're using a reflector, or bounce card, or anything like that, you're trying to take something and repair it. Now it works sometimes, sure. You know, if if we're if we're out at the golden hour, we're out at seven o'clock at night, a reflector is perfect. Yeah. Um, unless you're trying to nuke the sun and just get that beautiful background, which you can't do without some kind of a fill light. Sure. Um, but a reflector, if, if you're not using the sky as a background, you're not using a hotter, you know, brighter background light source, a reflector's going to do it. In this case, we can try a reflector. It's probably not going to do anything. No, it's not. And it, that, that did major difference between with and without flash there. Um, you know, I'm just thinking for, for myself, for learning it. it. The reason that I've stayed away from it at some points is because the type of subjects that I shoot, the more candid nature, right. I just feel like taking the time to do the flash. Right. They know it's there. They're not going to be as candid as they want to be. There's things you can do with an on-camera flash, too. That, you know, the, the tofu container or the soup container or, you know, the, 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 the smack it or whatever. You know, all these, they work great. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not putting them down. Nothing. I'm we nothing should do, gets we'll do that Gary Fong versus soup container after lunch at some point. We can. We can. I have friends that use the soup container. I, I, I've bought Gary Fong's. I gaff taped them. And I use them as almost creating a, you know, a six a inch reflector. Yeah. Well, a reflector. You create, creating a rounder light source. And they work great. All right. Or, you know, if I need to brighten up an entire room, I'll put it behind a chair somewhere with the Gary Fong on it, and it just bounces light everywhere. That's nice. So we're going to roll with a couple. We're going to do like four or five, and we're just going to see what happens. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm at, you know, right here I'm at 180. Yeah, about 180 with 200. Give me a smile, man. Pucker them lips. Give me Magnum. There you go. Look at that. That's what your readers want. And you hear that recycle? It's pretty quick. That, and that's, that's about probably, I, I'd estimate. See, the problem with what you're doing with your hands is you're making your hand. Oh, it's actually working. Your hands are getting really bright. Your fingers are going to get blown out. Because of that. All right. Right. That, and you that's do something quick. when you're working with one light. If you're trying to light a, an area, the fall off the way that light's set up right now is going from front to back, not back to front. Okay. If we brought it around a little more, but that's nice. It's not too directional. It's not too, I mean, these work. So if you were to... It's, it's giving me a little bit of modeling. There's a little bit of a Rembrandt coming in. Well, let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. If a person wanted to get started with a basic kit, I guess we could go to Allen's and build a, a basic kit and say it would cost you X amount if you already have one flash and on... and if a, you have you one know, flash in this, you could honestly, you could buy a, a $30, $40 stand. You could buy a, a $15 umbrella. The things that matter are like what holds the flash and what attaches the flash to the stand. Now there's good stands and bad stands, but there's companies like Giatos that make, I mean, I have a couple of them. They make these air cushion stands. One goes to 13 feet. It's got a nice footprint on it, so it's nice and stable. I think it was $45, $50. All right, so it's, it's not, I mean, you do, you, you want to get the right stuff. Yeah, you don't want to- buy it right, you buy it once. Right. You buy something cheap just to do it. What happens is either it ends up, you know, like when I first started doing this, I remember the first time I shot a bride on the art museum steps with an off-camera flash. Deb, for those of you who don't know the art museum steps, just where Rocky ran Filled up the off stairs. the art museum. <laughs> Top of the art museum steps, city line in the background. I'm trying to overpower the sun, model the light. I have a nano stand, which I use indoors. I use them outside sometimes, but they're heavily weighted when I do. They're nice because I can fit them in my airport bag. Um, umbrella, same, same basically setup with that. SB, I think it was an 80 at the time on top of it. It might have been an 80 or an 800. I love 80s. I love 800. I love them all. Um, one gust of wind and shh, gone. Wow. So because I didn't use what I need to, hence why there's you know 30 pounds on that bag right now. 
So you can really get into the game pretty easily and then you just build upon it in the future. Right. You buy one and then as you buy a flash, you know, okay, I can get away with spending, say the flashes, what's a 700 now, 400 bucks? Uh, it's gotta be maybe a little, slightly less than that. 350, we'll say yeah. 350. So, if, and a 700 is a great flash if you're just using it off camera or on camera as a fill, it doesn't command. That's the downside of it. Or does it, does it command? No, it does command, it doesn't have a PC port. Yeah, it does. It doesn't have a PC port. I don't know. The new flash doesn't have a PC port and that's kind of the only thing it's disappointing about because it's basically an 800 with the new body style without the PC port, which in an in a instance where we wanted to do what we're doing and we can't get this to sync, I got a pocket wizard. Well, now I'm buying this, I'm buying that, I gotta carry extra stuff and if the connection between this or that, you know, sure, this is more full. Sure. So All let's, right. let's roll, let's get a couple frames. Take a half step forward for me. There you go, right there. Right back in your spot. I'm sure. doing that lean in thing. I don't know. I don't, I'm not a model. I don't ah. know what I'm doing so much. I'm just feeling it. Just tell me. I mean, exact. this right here. That's a good frame. It's number 28. We'll remember that one. I, it, it, the thing with you is you don't, you don't have to model because you're just naturally poetic looking. Thank you, Richie. See, this is, this is another thing. When you're shooting portraits, when you're just standing here like this. Oh, yeah. You got to get me smiling because I don't laugh. It, it's, it, it, and 99% of the people you work with, if there's no relationship there, it's not going to happen. And the fake smiles you're, you're just gonna don't get, work. You're going to get that... that CEO on cover of Forbes that just looks like, I've had this shot taken a hundred times, I want to get to my meeting. Just tell the guy, to, you, you start talking golf with him, talk, find out what he likes because you can find so much information on CEOs and just be when, like. When you walk into somebody's office or somebody's house, look for something. Oh yeah. Look for something. Associate it with something and then. Or you're, you're on location, look at the car they pull up and look in the shoes, something. Just find your, your, your niche to conversate about. And, and if you can't find it, Shut up and work and get the hell out of here. Well, and don't be afraid to take a knock. These guys are, their asses are kissed all day long. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, even if you're just doing family portraits, like uh, Sunday, this past Sunday, I shot four under three year olds, both sets of parents and the grandparents. Well, if I would have walked in, I was just like, hey, how you doing? I'm rich. There's no The report. kids aren't going to respond. The parents aren't going to respond. So if you don't, you got to build the relationship with everybody whether it's, it's genuine or not. And typically, most of my clients I become not friends with, but I'm friendly with. If I yeah. see them on the street, we can stop and have a conversation. Yeah. It's not like, you know, we walk by each other and we're just... Right. So. I mean, that's the whole thing. It's you build the rapport, you talk, you converse, you joke. I mean, there's nothing wrong with just having a conversation that, that wakes people up. The, the, the best thing, and I use this all the time, I know it's cliche, it's awful, but one of my favorite movies is Zoolander. Is what? Zoolander. Yo, um, Either you love it or you hate it, but everybody knows what it is. Sure. And whenever you say, you know, you can have the most uptight, you know, groom. You've had uptight grooms. They're just like, oh, yeah. you know, I'm here because she wants the pictures. Just joke with them. I mean, give me blue steel. Give me magnum. You know what I mean? Like Slap them in the ass on occasion. Yeah. You know, I mean, hey. do, do something to get a rise out of the guy. Gas because... fight, you know, just something. You, just, <laughs> you know, you just got, you got to find the common ground. You got to, you know, our job isn't just to make pictures. Our job is to, there you go, the afro is doing a little bit of damage on yourself. There you go. Oh, there you see, puckered lips, give me cougar, give me cougar. And we joke, and it sounds awful, it feels awful sometimes, because you're just like, ah, oh, God, I don't want to say these things. Sure. But you find, you find that, and you know, you get frames like this, that's a funny frame, take a half step forward for me. Yeah, and once I you like unlock- that light bleeding on your arm. There you go, right And there. once you unlock their, uh, they get ready, you know, once you unlock them, they start playing. And, and, and never, you know, never, uh, what I see a lot is, and I, I work with a lot of people, I see this a lot. And then they'll have a conversation. Without the camera. Without the camera. And they're not ready to shoot. Right. If, if, if you take that camera out of your hand for one second, and I mean, I don't shoot with straps. I always have the camera right here because I can always go like that or like this. When I'm shooting events, I got a black rabbit on this side and another strap on the other side. But for portraits, I typically don't like a strap because if I do need to put it down, I'm hands free. If the light starts, go anything happens, I want to add. Sure. It's just, it's less restricting. Now, for a lot of people out there, keep it on strap. I mean, we have insurance. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'll, I throw it on the black rapid anymore just because when I do want to use my hands, it, it will hang right here. Right. But Which is true. And that's, you know, I carry a black rabbit. I love the thing. Um, should I be using it? Maybe, but yeah, I, doesn't you know, matter. For heavy, stuff like just, this, I don't use it either. So, and, and the biggest thing is, you know, as far as, you know, this is basic lighting. This is just, we're going to move around. We're going to leave you there 
and we're gonna find a find the, the more pleasing light. We're feathering the hair. Well, wow, look at that. that well, like that's a, something I talk about too. I talk a, about you moving opposed to the sub telling the subject to move because you can see it. And, and you know, it's gonna change the the direction of the light. And sometimes, you know, and unfortunately, especially in a circumstance like this, the light's gonna come into the frame a little bit. But so we have two completely different dynamic backgrounds. Are you going all verticals? I. I I think this is one thing that we'll never disagree about. I fill the frame when I'm doing a portrait or that's just a portrait. Now, if I'm doing an environmental portrait, you know, or if I'm trying to get a little more creative, you know, but right there, I crop your whole arm out. Right. So, that's funny. I like that. Fro nose photo. There you go. So, so just give me, give me one pose and stick in it just for a minute. And what we're going to do is we're going to show three different backgrounds. Follow you each time, right? Just with your eyes, just follow me. And we got a third one right over here. And not only are we changing the direction of the light and the, and the light on him, but we're also changing the background. So the background I like is straight ahead. There's a gap between trees. There's a nice lawn. The reflection off the lawn is giving me just this gold wishwash of looks. Beautiful. Cool. I think we got it. You think that's it? I, I within 10 frames of a conversation, typically get a couple frames I'm happy with. All right. And I don't want to waste more of your time. Sure. I don't want to waste more of the, my time. If I feel like I got it, yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to go through, I mean. Mm. Yeah, it's a basic, simple setup that you could, basically anybody's going to make money off of this. Really, I mean, you, you can now go out and do portraits of people and charge people $400 for what we just did. Yeah. I know that's inexpensive well, for you right 300 now. so i don't get you i don't get a job right or charge less but it, it you know it really no it's 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 cool it's hey, what it is it too nice simple. what's nice is to you know i'm not telling people not to hire professionals if you don't hire professionals my mortgage doesn't get paid i'm homeless i can't eat we don't want you to be homeless. and I, it's not like i'm eating lobster and filet every night just lox and bagels just lox and not even the, the lox i got a bag of bagels in the car i couldn't even afford the cream <laughs> cheese <laughs> and the bagels are free you know yeah. but uh you should you, you know for certain things there are things that professionals need to be involved in because as amateurs when you go on to a job if something happens and you lose you know, say your flash goes down. Right. You only got one flash. Your flash goes down. Your camera goes down. You didn't charge a battery or something. What are you going to do? Nothing. Right. If my flash goes down, there's another one on there. If my camera goes down, there's another one on my hand. My lens breaks. We, we're, we've done this, and we're, we're trained with the ability to say, okay, bounce back. Like Go the opposite direction. When you had the wrong setting on the camera. Right. You thought it was something, and, and then and you, did you. But did you see me stressing out? No. Did you see it, me going? Oh, oh, what do I do? Right. That's that's something that's major. And then if something's it, not working, and you let anybody know it's not working. Forget about and it. And then Job's if, over. And if it's not working, and, and for some reason the flash does go down, you need to figure out what else to do. You still need to do it. Yeah. You're like, you know what? I see a different angle that this could work at. You right. know, let's let's focus in on that for now and see what we get. And uh, right. you know what? I think it's going to be good. Yeah. Positives. It's and, all and, positives. And with lighting, that happens a lot. You might light somebody, and, and the thing about lighting is some people, this side's better than this side. You know, you have a little more beard hair here than you do here. Yeah, I need to shave. But what's nice about that is this kind of hid that a little bit, so it almost makes it more even. They put this in shadow, you know, it's, it's, but you could go the opposite way. I could light from this side, put that side in shadow. But we didn't do a dramatic shadow. It's probably only a half stop here to here. Sure. So, but I mean, it, it, what what's nice at, is, Richie? huh? Did you get distracted? I got my ADD, man. Shiny objects. Shiny objects. Shiny Squirrels. object. There's, I don't. There's oh, an El Camino. Oh, an El Camino with, going with a lawnmower. With lawnmower somewhere in, in the, the background. background. That's I'm sorry. perfect. I'm sorry. El Camino is a lawnmower. You might see it in the background. You probably won't see it through the trees. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, so, all in all, seems pretty simple. We'll have to go into more detail. You know, just not fully technical, but sit here and say how you set the camera, yeah. how you set the flash. It just seemed simple. El Camino with rims. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is you, you, you got to find a starting point and you always have to have the same starting point. You have to have a routine. When I show up to a job, whether it's indoors, outdoors, bright, dark, I find my ambient and I build the light to fit that. I don't make that and then build the ambient. I don't build it backwards because then you're reconstructing a wheel. I say, okay, this is the frame I want to create. How do I build it? How mm -hmm. do I get there? And, you know, this is going to give people the ability to do that. Okay. And it's going to give the people who, to make their pictures just better. 
it's it's it is it's more portrait the, the the setup portraits i mean i should yeah. be i should be using stuff like this for basic portrait for shoots for more outside. formal stuff for more formal my candid stuff you know when i shot you didn't see the bowling alley video probably but that's where i need to do fill light and i would like to re you know replicate that and show people instead of shooting at 6400 iso and and stuff like that to try to wrangle the light with a 8514 what a little bit of fill light would do maybe we'll do that we'll go bowling yeah, and do it and do that too. Yeah, was, we'll redo I was in the, the other one. Team in middle school. Yeah. So, so something you have to be careful about when you're doing video is that you don't run out of time. Set a clock because we ran out of we ran out of time. We almost got close to the 20 minutes. But Richie, thank you for coming out. Dude, thank you. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. I hope we get to do a lot more. And I mean, I have some ideas for some other things we can do to help more people with flash because I need to learn it. Like I said earlier on, yeah. and a lot of people want to learn it because it will make their photos better for certain things. So. Until next time, Jared Poland, fro knows photo.com. See ya. Bye bye.